Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends and colleagues at Akapihan sa Manila Day, as well as in our Zoom, um, in our Facebook. We are indeed very honored and privileged to have our top economic manager of the Duterte administration. And the president always referred to him, my uh, valedictorian classmate in Ateneo. <laughs> But he will always tell me, hindi totoo yun, kasi yung aking valedictorian na nasa abroad na. And I was saying, as I said in my column, he is not humble, but he's just being truth and candid and frank about it. And I'm referring to none other than Finance Secretary Carlos Sunny Dominguez III. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Michu, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Sir, as I always do, I ask my guests to give their opening remarks or uh, whatever you want to say, sir. The, it's the Zoom, it's yours. Thank you very much. It's uh, always a pleasure to uh, appear uh, in your show. Uh, it's been too long. I think the last time I appeared was uh, two years or three, two and a half years ago. <laughs> and uh, But it's always a pleasure to appear and also to read your column. Uh, your column is one that is thoughtful, one that is uh, uh, truthful, and one that uh, inspires people to act. So thank you very much for your uh, very good column. Thank you very much, Paul. You know, as I have said, uh, I believe that uh, we have, we're over the hump on this uh, COVID uh, uh, contagion. As early as uh, March of 2020, I mentioned to uh, my friends in the media that this is not a short battle, okay? This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And uh, judging from past uh, contagions, this doesn't come and go quickly. So uh, all throughout this difficult time, we have tried to preserve uh, the financial strength of the Philippines and to use the financial strength that uh, President Duterte has built up since 2016, which I must admit was building on the successes of the administration of Noy Noy Aquino, especially in uh, preserving and conserving our finances. Uh, we, we built on it and uh, we in, in fact tried to improve it a little bit, which put us in a very good position. Uh, and uh, we have been able so far to last this, uh, this contagion without a downgrade, okay? Of course, admittedly, in Fitch, uh, the outlook was put to negative uh, earlier this year, but that is not a downgrade. A downgrade is when they change the numbers or the letters or the plus or minus in your system. And so far we have not been downgraded. And I want to thank, uh, of course, all those who covered the DOF for helping uh, show our message. Our message is all, we have always tried to be very honest, very clear, and uh, very straightforward about our, our positions, uh, even though uh, sometimes it, uh, it uh, results in, in criticism to us, but you know that is part of democracy and we believe, it, believe in transparency. And that is why, uh, using the word transparency, that is why we went ahead and uh, asked our uh, GIIs to recognize already the liabilities that they have. This is for transparency. And also because uh, now uh, the GIIs uh, have recognized their contingent liabilities, uh, we hope that uh, decision makers and policy makers in both the uh, legislature and the, and the uh, executive will make decisions with regards to these agencies 
based on facts, not on conjecture or emotion, but on what is really reality. So I, if you have any questions, uh, uh, Marichu or any of your colleagues, I'll be very happy to answer yes. them. Yes. I think uh, Tonette Chonko and uh, Mark uh, Hoven are also with us today. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you for mentioning that sir, because I forgot to introduce them, but they can later on join with us if you wish to ask them to speak about on certain matters. But I was when I watched your uh, presser, virtual presser last Friday, um, you mentioned about a plan to put up an in investment agency to be the one doing the manage, uh, investment management for this G GIIs and because as you mentioned, parang they don't have that capability or expertise. Can you uh, elaborate on that? Well, each of the agencies, uh, SSS and uh, GSIS, have their own uh, investment management offices, which I think do pretty good, pretty well. And uh, I, however, I believe that uh, more coordination under a, a unified uh, uh, management uh, of, our, of their funds would be more effective and more beneficial for the Philippine, uh, for the members of SSS and GSIS. Uh, you know, there is uh, other countries have uh, sovereign wealth funds, okay, uh, like Singapore, uh, I believe Malaysia has one too. And uh, they benefit from not only domestic and in, in, not only investments in the domestic market, but also investments abroad. You know, their business is essentially uh, insurance and they have to spread the risks. So it is it might be a good idea to consolidate the management of these uh, funds. And, all, and manage them really as a sovereign wealth fund. Thank you. So is the DOF uh, preparing or drafting a proposed bill to that effect? Yes, we are. Thank Yes, we are. So what is the status of that bill? Have you filed it? No, no, Any no, authors? No, no, not yet, not yet. We haven't, uh, we haven't asked to file it, asked any of the legislators to file it yet. Sir, we, uh, of course you realize that there is barely uh, less than three months left of this present Congress because campaign period starts in February next year. Yes. You still, do you believe we have or you have time to press for that particular bill? Uh, you know, I think we have less than, we've counted it, I think we have less than 30 session days, okay? Uh, most likely we don't have time in, re in reality, but it's always good to put something out there, even if it doesn't get passed, because it is already in the uh, public uh, uh, arena for discussion mm -hmm. and can be picked up by the next administration or the mm -hmm. next Congress. Yes, I was about to go to that next administration. So <laughs> I, I think I even uh, sent a message to you in the chat box last Friday asking you how do you intend to pursue these reforms, particularly with the GIIs, because yes. the next administration might just allow them back to go back to their old practices and faulty counting processes, sir. Uh, well, I don't know how they can do that because... Uh... All uh, institutions must follow international and local uh, accounting standards. And uh, there is, uh, I think, no escaping uh, that. And it's out in the open already. And uh, I think it is best for uh, the next administration and the administration after that to yes. continue uh, with, with this practice. Yes. It, it is. It is required, okay? It is required. It yeah. is required by the IC. It is required by the uh, the uh, account the the people who oversee accounting uh, standards. Yes, by COA itself. And you mentioned last week yes. that COA will be downloading in their website their yes. own yes. review. Yes. So there is likelihood that the COA might tell the three GIIs, "Hey guys." You are uh, committing uh, uh, 
disallowances I mean fault fault due to faulty accounting processes so yeah. there would be as you said the the box uh, the other side of it it might be taken against the the third administration why did you allow it <laughs> well in our case uh, it's we we did not create new uh, liabilities we merely recognize it yes and uh, the recognition is required by uh, by good accounting practices and uh, good uh, uh, transparency practices okay. so we just follow it yes uh, regardless of the political consequences but yes. in the long run as i mentioned earlier yes. in the long run uh, as the president said uh, the truth is always it is it's always good to tell the truth <laughs> okay and sir uh, in fact last i think yesterday in fact the COA already uh, issued that tip COA or the ombudsman already notified field health in particular about their uh, um, faulty accounting process <laughs> and, and and you cited in fact the go uh, field health is get got 70 billion in subsidy for the covid yes so how how would the president uh, handle the situation now? Well, you know, we pointed out in the past that uh, indeed uh, the the finances of uh, of PhilHealth have to be looked at very very carefully, and that is being done for our membership on the board of PhilHealth, and the one who attends for us uh, religiously is. Uh, uh, our national treasurer Leia and her team, and we have been working hard to make sure that uh, the PhilHealth uh, recognizes their problems and that uh, take actions takes that they take action on them. Oh, so do they have a specific time period within which to correct these deficiencies, which the senators have always been, the lawmakers have been raising on the PhilHealth mismanaging the funds? Uh, I believe so. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the details, but mm. I believe that they are working very hard uh, to achieve uh, 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 their uh, better financial health. Yes, because the consequences, one part of the consequences of that is their failure to remit the proper the reimbursements of the hospitals as well as the benefits of the healthcare workers. So there are yes. several implications on that. Yeah, I, as I have mentioned in the past, and this is not a, a new a new uh, revelation, mm. but that will help uh, internal, uh, how would you say, information system mm -mm. needs vast improvement. <laughs> vast. And I emphasize vast. Okay. <laughs> Unlike the DOF, why don't you share your expertise with the field help? We're trying. <laughs> No, we, 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 we don't have the same problems as Phil L, okay? <laughs> yes. But certainly, uh, GSIS and SSS have a much better uh, 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 digitalization process. They have a much better accounting system. They have a much better uh, information system uh, than, uh, than Phil Health. But again, uh, uh, I don't want to sound uh, to be uh, a critic, but they really have to focus on that. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, I'm sure all our GIIs are 100% ready to be of assistance to them. Okay, sir. At the outset, you mentioned about the Philippine uh, economy getting better, but as the chief fiscal manager, uh, how would you uh, uh, describe the present fiscal picture in a, amid us in the situation of getting out of the COVID? Well, like all countries in the world, okay, like all countries, the fiscal position, of course, has deteriorated. Mm -mm. But our fiscal position, the fiscal position of the Philippines remains solid. And we are on the right track to a strong and early recovery as soon as the economy reopens in step with our massive vaccination program. 
From January to October 2021, our total revenue collection has been exactly as projected. Revenues reached two and a half trillion pesos, 5% higher than last year's level. This is equivalent to 86% of the 2.9 trillion revised revenue program for the year. In particular, our tax collections grew by 9% year on year, reaching 2.2 trillion pesos in the first 10 months of 2021. For the said period, the Bureau of Internal Revenue posted a 7% increase in its collections, totally 1.7 trillion pesos. The Bureau of Customs Collections, on the other hand, posted a double digit growth of 17% to 525.4 billion pesos. All these reflect strong trade flows and more economic activities. But I want to add here yeah. that uh, I'm very happy with the leadership of Billy Dulay in the BIR and of uh, General uh, Guerrero in the uh, Bureau of Customs. Throughout the COVID, uh, crisis, they did not slack in their collection and uh, their effort has to be commended. So we expect that in 2022, total revenues will return to the pre-pandemic levels. Meanwhile, the total expenditures for Jan from January to October of 2021 of 3.7 trillion pesos beat the previous year's 10 month level by 12% and is 78% of the 4.7 trillion peso program for the year. With the higher public health bill, however, our deficit was pushed to 832.5 billion pesos for the first 10 months of this year. This is 37% more than last year's level as we predicted. In 2021, we expect the deficit to reach 1.8 trillion pesos or equivalent to 9.5% of GDP. Nevertheless, the budget deficit as a percentage of GDP is projected to decline starting next year as revenue start to recover and grow at a faster rate than expenditures. This puts less pressure on our borrowing requirements and debt sustainability threshold. On the other hand, Gross borrowing for 2021 is expected to reach 3 trillion pesos, roughly the same as the 2020 level. The first 10 months of 2021, our gross borrowing amounted to 2.7 trillion pesos. Of this total amount, 2.2 trillion came from domestic sources. It includes the 540 billion peso provisional advances we availed from BSP this year for the purposes of liquidity buffer in case there was any unforeseen threat, such as the emergence of more infectious COVID-19 variants. Nonetheless, we already have funds to repay the, repay the entire amount, and we will do so before the end of 2021. The remaining 518.7 billion in gross borrowings came from external sources through global bond offerings and official development assistance. For next year, the program borrowings will start to decline. Rest assured, this administration will make sure to help the next president and the next generations address the fiscal and economic risks brought about by the pandemic. In fact, the Department of Finance is now preparing our transition plan and among the recommendations will be a roadmap to fiscal consolidation. Wow, nice to hear about the, you are already preparing the transition plan and you are ready to present it to whoever wins in the next election. Before I go to the financial question, I, let me delve into the com, uh, election of political because certainly the election campaign spending will uh, be, uh, be uh, influencing all these activities and all these plans and projects. So how do you uh, fit in the election campaign period, at least for the next six months? And it has been it has started already this year, in fact. So how about the uh, calculations? I don't know, huh? but I think our economy has grown to such an extent that uh, election spending is not so much of a 
big, big uh, issue. Of course, there is a spike yeah. in the spending, but because our economy has become you know, big and robust, it, I don't think it will be affected that much. I, it was, I don't think it will drive up inflation yes. or, yeah, that's... or you know, it, it, I, I don't think. And frankly, this year, I don't think the spending will be so much. Yes. Uh, fact, I think, the inflation figure, di ba, bumaba pa? I think so. I think yung, ano, yung inflation, yeah. He, he, our inflation is being, is already being tamped down. Mm -hmm. No, but I think, you know, inflate, uh, election spending this year might not be as expected. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on that. But uh, frankly, <laughs> because of the, some, the, there's still some restrictions in movements, I don't think there will be too many rallies uh, which cost money. Yes. <laughs> so I don't think, uh, or maybe the motorcades uh, cost money, but I don't know. We will cost. <laughs> diba? Anyway, that political question is better addressed to your brother, Paul. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anyway, sir, uh, uh, the next topic I would like to take up with you, because of course you already jumped the gun on me on the ODAs and everything. Um, how are these COVID-related loans and ODAs been spent? And how much have you so far distributed, deployed? Yeah, I, uh, from uh, March to 16, to 2020 to December 7, 2021, the government has secured a total of 23.4 billion US dollars in COVID-19 related external financing. Okay. Of this amount, 21 billion dollars is for the general budget support. That's to cover up for the drop in, the, in our collections. While 2.4 billion dollars was for COVID-19 response and recovery projects, including the procurement of vaccines. Out of the 21 billion US dollar budget support financing contracted by the government, a total of 19.8 billion US dollars has been disbursed to the government since March of last year to help bridge the budget gap. Okay. Of the 24 billion of the 2.4 billion US dollar grant and loan financing contracted in support of various COVID-19 related projects. About 1.2 billion US dollars has been disbursed to the government. These projects include the procurement of laboratory equipment, medical supplies, and vaccines, as well as interventions that will address the impact of the pandemic on poor communities. These are being implemented by the relevant agencies involved in our pandemic response. So uh, the bulk really has been for the bulk of the funding for the vaccines has been actually to, pro to buy the vaccines. Yes. And uh, the way we finance that is we borrowed the money from ADB, AIIB, and World Bank. And I must commend uh, Undersecretary uh, Mark Hoven for being the first in the world to to uh, create a consortium of sorts of these three uh, banks to fund our vaccine procurement program. Another point I'd like to bring out is we chose to finance our vaccine procurement from the uh, multilateral agencies, uh, a, uh, Asian Development Bank, World Bank, and Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, because we wanted to assure the public that there is no overpricing. Uh, okay. You know, uh, World Bank, AIIB, and ADB will not finance anything that smells of overpricing. And believe me, they see the prices around the world they know the prices to other countries, which we do not know. Huh? We do not yes. know the prices. So they know the prices around the world and they definitely will not lend us any money if they suspect that there is any hint of corruption. So that is that we designed this program that way to assure the public and especially the legislature that while we cannot 
uh, disclose the prices because of non-disclosure agreements, that we have a test, a, 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 a seal of good housekeeping uh, from these agencies. So yeah, but uh, despite this uh, seal of house good seal of good housekeeping and assurances that multilateral agencies, the government still procure vaccines government to government. Are this no, government no. to government procurement covered by ODA? No, no, we don't have government to government. Ah. We have donations. Ah, okay? no government to government. Covax, but we do not buy government to government. Even it's, the DOH? Kasi nagkibabasa ko, DOH procured these vaccines from China. No, no, so, okay, no, no. Procured the vaccine from China through mm. the loans of ADB. But Chinese, but it's not the Chinese government that sold it to us. It okay. is Sinovac. Okay. Sinovac is a, is a private company. Okay. A, and we bought the vaccine. We didn't buy it from the U.S. government. We bought it from... Moderna directly, uh, no, sorry, not Moderna. We bought it from Pfizer. Oh. And we bought uh, vaccines from Russian companies. I forget oh. the name of the Russian yes. company that makes yes. Sputnik. Yes. We bought vaccines from the company that makes Astra. Uh, yeah, for, for Moderna, yes, we bought, yes. So we bought. And we yes. also received donations through COVAX. Yes. COVAX is a... United Nations organized uh, body yes. uh, that uh, provides uh, the vaccines for the for donations. Yeah. Yes. We right also then. received directly, uh, we oh. also did receive directly donations from France, from Poland. China also gave us some Sinovac vaccines. I believe we got donations also from the US. We've got donations from Japan, from uh, Poland. Uh, I, I don't have the complete list, but uh, yes. those were donations. Those were not uh, purchases from the governments. Pardon my poor understanding, sir. Because DOH nga procured from China, and they parang ang dating sa amin, government to government. But they are using ODA funds, so yes. it went through the process of the yes. ADB, AIAB, and World Bank. Yes. Kaya nga lang, ang deployment is government to government. Uh, ah, in the case no, of no, Sinovac, no. private company, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah, but, Parang mga private but, company. But, uh, but the Chinese government also gave us uh, vaccines. Oh. Okay? Yes. So, uh, so you, have to, uh, no. you, you have to remember also that uh, early in 2020, the president said uh, all these uh, contracts have to be signed by three people. Oh. Okay? Uh, okay. Secretary Galvez, Secretary uh, Duque and myself. Mm -mm. So uh, we are responsible for the, the procurement. The three of us are. Okay. Um, pardon me, Lisa, can I go back lang kayo na sa BOC? Sure, sure. Uh, kasi I read a story from the Star filed by our reporters that the senators were not convinced on the BOC revenue collection targets and there are a lot of agriculture smuggling, uh, not to mention the drug shabu, <laughs> illegal <laughs> smuggling. So how do you reconcile these uh, uh, conflicting views on the BOC? Uh, no, no, first of all, it's a fact. BOC's collection went up by about 17%. That is a fact, okay? Yes. And that is confirmed by their report to us. And I don't believe the report. I asked the treasury if the amount was actually received by them. Okay. Yes, yes. So I trust, but I verify. <laughs> okay. So I'm sure that they collected that amount. I am also sure that there are, there are many attempts to smuggle things into the Philippines. Many. We do not catch all of them. Believe me, I am sure of that. Okay. But yes. we make our best effort to do so. So we know what they are smuggling in, okay? We know. It's easy to find out. You just look at the domestic price and compare with the international price. Number one that they smuggle in are things like onions, okay? <laughs> okay. Because onion price here is very high because there is a limitation on how much amount we, we, we can import. Okay, so onion price is high. Uh, 
at one time, uh, well, cigarettes also is very lucrative to import, okay? Uh, to Because Sunday. I'll tell you why. Our yes. tax on cigarettes, almost 50 pesos per, I don't know how much it is now. Per, per, pack. per pack, 50 yeah. bucks. The yeah. cost of producing a pack of cigarettes is less than 10 pesos. Okay? <laughs> yes. So if you can buy a cigarette at, at uh, 15 pesos a pack outside, right? And, and have a cost of bringing it here of another two pesos. Uh, uh, so that's uh, 12 pesos and you can sell it for 40. You make a lot of money, okay? Yeah. By yeah. the way, uh, by the way, the our esti the estimates of the industry on the illicit trade in the Philippines of cigarettes is around eight to 10%. In the past, it was around 35%. Wow, much worse. <laughs> By the way, you see, illicit cigarette trade, I understand, in the UK is 65%. Ooh. In Malaysia, is also around 65%. That is from the reports of the, of the uh, cigarette companies. So, uh, you know, uh, we're, we have smuggling, we have illicit trade, but it is, it is definitely lower than when we started. Mm, yes. And we are trying our damnedest to, to stop it, but uh, we are really working hard to do so. Yes. Uh, Secretary, let me entertain a question from my Twitter because I tweeted that you will be my guest. And my first question came from a former diplomat, Ms. Moira Galiaga, and she, she is asking, with my reference to the latest, you were, uh, with reference to my latest column where she credits the initiative to strictly enforce compliance of PFRS4, reporting of GIs. Can you expound a bit more on the findings and assure those of us who are members of those institutions that we have nothing to worry about? Definitely, you have nothing to worry about. Uh, this, uh, uh, since 2018, the DOF has been in constant coordination with various organizations such as the International Monetary Fund, SGV, the Insurance Commission, and the Commission on Audit to review the financial reporting and management of the GOCCs, specifically SSS, GSIS, and PhilHealth. Through a series of reviews, it was found that these government insurance institutions have not been following the proper accounting standards, particularly the Philippine Financial Reporting Standards, number four. PFRS4 is the current and interim accounting standard imposed on all insurance entities in the Philippines since 2005, and all private insurance companies have been using it. Except this those means, <laughs> Yes, this means that when an insurance entity receives money from its members and enters into a contract with them, to provide monetary obligations when certain events occurred, it has to set aside a reserve to cover the liabilities. For 15 years, the government insurance institutions have only been booking all their collections as income and have not been setting aside liabilities. Hence, the GSI government insurance institutions have been overstating their income and understating their liabilities for the past one and a half decades. These unreported liabilities are called social benefit liabilities. They represent the net legal obligations of the government insurance institutions to pay specific guaranteed amounts or benefit to their members or policyholders. Under PFRS4, the social benefit liability includes the actual pension or other benefit claims that are due to the members and the required reserve or the present value of all future pension payments or all other benefit claims. The reserve is based on actuarial estimates using a combination of historical and forecasted data. Upon my recommendation, the Commission on Audit has required these government insurance institutions to adopt the PFRS4 starting with their 2020 financial statements. With the government insurance institutions 
full compliance with PFRS4, their combined total liability increased to 9.9 .9 trillion pesos in 2020 from 154 billion only in 2019. The increase in liability is due to the recognition and booking of the social benefit liabilities as required under PFRS4. Let me emphasize that these are not new social benefit liabilities. They already existed, but it is only now they are being recognized. More importantly, booking and reporting the social benefit liabilities do not affect the institution's cash flow and funding situation. The SSS, the GSIS, and PhilHealth can still meet their short-term and long-term obligations to their members. The Filipino people will still receive their pension or other benefits from those social institutions. With the published audited 2020 financial reports of SSS and GSIS and PhilHealth, we now have an accurate picture of the funding reality of these institutions. We have formulated several recommendations to improve the management of these funds. So essentially, the public has nothing to worry about. They have to, uh, they, they will receive the benefits and uh, the fund lives of these uh, corporations have not changed. But the, the purpose of this uh, uh, revelation is to make sure that policy decisions and legislation is based on facts, not on emotions or anger or, or gun standing. I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> but, but let us look at the facts. Yes. Thank you. I agree. Sir. Uh, may, may just call column for today. May some comment na natawa ko. When I uh, when you based on your presser, yung virtual life. I mean the actual life is ending in so and so dates. And yes. the comment was, you are saying to the public that the life, the lifespan of these agencies will, of these GIs will expire. So di ko na dapat nansel kasi I, I failed to explain to them that it goes beyond the yes. actual life. It's yes. just doctoral estimation of the present income. Yes. And if no added uh, contributions or later revenues, they will expire by that date. Not necessarily they will or, expire. Or, or if you increase the if you increase the benefits without increasing the in the, the inflow, contribution, yeah, premiums, the, the the life will will shrink. Okay? Yes, yes. So, it's like you. It's like a private uh, person. You have mm -hmm. a savings account. You're saving for your retirement, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Eh, but you, but you say, Overspent okay, I gotta account. buy a car, and they use that fund. Of course, your retirement fund will really it, right? Yes. Yes. Oh. Or if you say, I will increase the amount of money I put in, then your retirement fund will be uh, the uh, what you will get in the future will be increased. So yes. there. Yeah. I mean, may additional follow-up question para si dip, our diplomat Mungerag Aliaga. Um, also, what should these institutions do to decrease their liabilities? What they should do uh, it's not to decrease their liability. It is to improve their fund life. Now, you can improve your fund life by doing two things. You can increase the, uh, the contributions right yeah. or you can decrease your expense because every peso you spend is a peso you take out from the future now that's why i keep on insisting to gsis sss and pill health you must be very efficient because that is not government money you are playing with that is that is, that money belongs to the people who contributed to it so it is your duty to reduce your expenditure and, and, so, and, and to increase uh, to be able to increase the to be able to increase the fund life and possibly the benefits. Yes. You have to be more efficient. That's why I'm saying number one, each of them kasi have their own collection department. Yes. Why do you need a collection department? Why don't you say let BIR collect it for you? Okay. 
Because in the States, when you your SSS is collected by the BIR, there, the IRS. And then the money they collect is remitted to the, to the social security system. So why do you have to have your own? Why do you have your have to have your own uh, uh, collection agency? That's number one. Number two, I compared. Let's say uh, I became chairman of SSS in 2018. Okay. I compare. I told them I want to compare how much it costs you to give out 100 pesos of benefits. Compare that with how much it uh, the the social security system in Malaysia, Japan, Indonesia, how much do they spend? It costs us six pesos per hundred pesos we spend. In Japan, the cost is less than two pesos per hundred thousand, uh, per hundred pesos given out. Why? Because they are more uh, digitized. Okay? Yes. It costs them less. Yes. Maybe their staff is more efficient. So those are the things that we have to look at. Yes. SSS and GSIS management have the responsibility to, to make sure the, the, they are very efficient in providing the benefits to their members. They cannot be inefficient because yes. inefficiency costs the members. Uh. I don't quite agree with your collection theory. I, I agree more on your investment yeah, okay. agency. Okay, so that's, then, a, that's another thing. Okay, increase your investment. But let us not forget huh, that you have a, a responsibility to be efficient. Yes. Maybe, maybe one collection agency is not the answer. <coughs> but let's explore all the ways yes. to reduce our expense. Digitize, and I'm very happy that uh, SSS and, and GSIS have moved very quickly to digitize. In fact, you can borrow money now from GSIS without going there. Yes. You can do it online. SSS, the same thing. Yes. You well, know why? Because when I became chairman, I asked each of them, have yes. you actually gone to an SSS office to collect your, your pension? They said, no. I said, I have. I went. Oh, when 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 I when my secretary told me, "Meron pala akong pera sa SSS." <laughs> I went there oh. and I applied. Oh. And it took me uh, more than 2 hours. Uh, and the, the the office was full. It was uncomfortable. I said, "You know, why don't you digitize this?" And I'm very happy they did. Yes. It's I think it is easier now to I haven't gone to an office lately, but I believe it is easier now to actually transact with the SSS. Yes. But I got money, huh? I, uh, I got money. Uh, <laughs> you were the... private sector ka dati, di ba? Yes, yes. Ako, yes. Now yes. I'm going to claim from my GSIS. Yes. When I, when I, when I retire. Yes. And I agree with you with the digitized, but uh, uh, giving it to the BIR to collect, that's, that's not agreeable to me. Eh, kasi maakyus ka na vested interest. BIR is under DOF. Diba? Well, so is SSS and GSIS. They are both under us. Okay. <laughs> kasi you want BIR to call, be the one to collect, eh, diba? So ma no, no, that is one and... option. That is yes, one, one option. option. Okay, because yes, okay. that's being done in other countries. Huh? Yes. Most and... countries, in fact, do it that way. I think no. Tonet did a research. Mm -hmm. Tonet, are you there? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Diba? Connect other countries. Think yes, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's just a manner. It's just a manner of collecting. It's a mode because when a company uh, on a monthly basis remits their withholding tax uh, of the employees, the uh, the employer usually deducts every month from an employee the SSS contribution, the withholding tax, the, the uh, health insurance, and all of that. It's all deducted by the employer. So the way it's done is that it's just one agency that you remit all of this to as, as like a, what they call a payroll tax when in, in okay. fact, it's not all a tax. Eh? Okay. And then once it goes to treasury, the treasury is the one that um, distributes the payments to the proper agencies. So it's wow. just a mode of collecting. Okay. Uh, 
National Treasury naman pala. Okay, kahalak sa DOA. Anyway, uh, National Treasury is also sa under the DOA. Yan. Sa amin din yan. Sa amin din. Alam mo naman, I devil's advocate, the thinking of the Yes, you know, no, I understand. I understand. Yes. Uh, anyway, sir, um, I'm going back to the sovereign wealth investment, no? Sabi yes. mo, give up ka na, mag, ma, na hindi na in up to. But you have several pending tax measures, tax reform package. Ano pa ba yung na-tending mo sa 18 Congress? Well, uh, the, tax, uh, the tax bills that are pending mm. are what we call package 3 and package 4 na lang. Uh -oh. Okay? So uh, we are committed to pursue the remaining packages of our tax reform program. Package 3 or the Real Estate Property Valuation and Assessment Reform Bill introduces improvements in our property valuation system. Mm. It was approved by the House of Representatives on November 25, 2019 <laughs> and is now endorsed for technical, to the technical working group level with the Senate Committee on Ways and Means. So, 2019 pa, na-pass na yon, pero oh. nasa Senate. Okay. Package 4 or the Passive Income and Financial Intermediaries Taxation Act aims to simplify and harmonize the taxation of passive income, financial intermediaries, and, and financial transactions. Package 4 was approved by the House of Representatives on September 9, 2019. <laughs> and is now under the technical working group <laughs> level with the Senate Committee on Ways and Means. No, no, the, the, these are not new taxes, huh? Uh, yes, yes, I know. This, I know. It, these are simply making it easier. Mm -mm. And, uh, you know, I'll, one thing, okay? Our uh, uh, package three, for instance, huh? uh, which is uh, have, having to do with how to assess land values. Mm. Yes. That will not increase the income of uh, the national government. Because yes. Those taxes are going to the local governments. Yes. But our problem kasi, is that the, the way we, the local governments assess is not according to good standards or yes. international standards. So we yes. want to make it, you know, let's be more international, more, more modern. Okay? okay. That's all. <laughs> That's all we want. Okay? Yes. Now, the other one, uh, we're trying to reduce the different uh, taxations on passive income, financial intermediaries from a total of, I think, 86 to, I think, uh, around 40. But maybe Tonette can explain a little more. Yes, that's right. Um, there are many types of taxes on financial products uh, under the tax code right now. And uh, there are, there, there, you know, they have various tax rates, which actually cause arbitrage in the capital market. So uh, what people tend to do is choose the product with the least tax. So that doesn't make it very efficient for the capital market. So what the, what the package four aims to do is to rationalize these rates and basically make the rates equal for the different types of um, passive income on financial products. So, so that is really the aim to make the rates the same, uh, like between a bank deposit and um, a mutual fund product. That kind of um, that kind of uh, rationalization of rates is it's what's in package four. So, mom, when you say the bank deposit, I, I think. I get only less than 3% of interest uh, income from my bank deposit. So what do you want to do with it? And it is subject to tax also. Well, the, the income, because right now, is subject to a 20% final withholding tax, your interest okay. income. Uh -huh. so, so what the package four proposes to do is to reduce that to basically to 15. Um, so that the rates... And then, and then on the other types of, because remember you also had um, before, well, up to now the seven and a half percent rate if your bank deposit is in dollars, right? <laughs> so, so, so it's a bit, you know, not all of, not everyone is dollars. So yes, yes. twenty percent and seventy seven point five. So it's much favorable to people who have dollars. So th that kind of thing. So what we want to do is rationalize the rates. So it will be 
similar to to the extent that we can similar um similar rates on on dividends on 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 that and so all types of passive income um similar rates so there's less arbitrage but if you say similar yeah, uh, rates uh, yeah no let me add that uh, yes. you know our taxation on interest income is is against is not pro poor okay yeah. <laughs> oh, because yes. if you have a peso deposit yes okay oh. if you have a peso deposit less than five years oh. Your tax on your interest is twenty percent. If your peso deposit is more than five years, your tax is zero. Oh, so <laughs> who can who can afford to put their money more than five years? Middle income coming on. Okay, no, so hindi pro poor. Okay, yeah. number two, if your deposit is in US dollars, the tax is on on the on the interest is only seven and a half percent. Yes. Oh, so who has dollars? Not me. <laughs> okay. So, yon, ganon. So th those are the things that the art taxation is, you know, it, it it it's it should be actually uh, a level playing field. Yes. So there, that's what we're trying to do. Maganda yung pangyari nyo, ha? Oh, well, I tell you, it's been there since 2019. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So, who, so, so who's, uh, uh, um, whip, who's the whip master at the Senate? Para, I mean, the chairman of the committee. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay? Yeah, you have to court her. <laughs> Not na, no? <laughs> to woo her, di ba? Oh, come on, yeah. less than you know, 30 session days left. I'll do the initial courting for you. <laughs> because Thank it will you. be down to my benefit. Because yes. I've been complaining. Ang yeah. late ng interest ng bank deposits ko. Tapos ang laka ng withholding tax. Ano ba yan? Yes, correct. We want to make it even uh, uh, even playing field. Level oh, playing no, yeah. field. For that reason alone, I will push Pia to pass that into law. Anyways, uh, sir, can I ask you about, because I am at loss. The Bloomberg last week criticized us on under resiliency, on our COVID resiliency. And yesterday, Malacanang was so uh, proud and elated to see the Nikkei. Are they looking at two different countries? You, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, huh? but yeah. actually, I do not pay attention to the scoring. Okay. First of all, we are not in a horse race. Okay. <laughs> and, and secondly, I do not know how they come up with those scores. Yes. So, in fact, I was asked one time uh, by in a for uh, by uh, I think it, in in a, by one of the foreign investors if I'm not worried about our scoring in this in this in this. Some people I don't pay attention to that. Oh. And he says, "Why not?" I said, "Because I don't understand how they do it." I said, "Why? Do you? Do you understand how no. did they construct it?" Yeah. Well, she said no. So well, why will you pay attention to a, a, a guy who is scoring a game that you don't know what the game is? Okay. <laughs> so quite frankly, I don't know. I, I just don't pay attention to it. And it doesn't bother me. Okay. What's important to me is that the Filipino people are served the best. Okay. Yes, yes. That we are doing uh, uh, as best we can. Now, how come they do not score us on this issue? Huh? On this yes, issue? Yes, yes. Our debts per 100,000 people are only 45. What 45? We only have 45 debts per 100,000 population. Pesos, you mean? No, people. A 45 only people. 45 people per 100,000 died because of COVID. Okay. In Hungary, it is about 350. In U.S., it's about 250 people per 100,000. How come they don't score us with that? Oh. Oh, what does that mean? I mean, we have preserved lives better than them. Yes. Oh, isn't that important? I think it's important. Yes. Italy, I don't know what's the number. Uh, Italy is also very high. Uh oh. Um, uh, so, I mean, we, we, we here are only 45. I mean, I'm sorry that 45 yes, people we're died. So, we're but sad it about is it. certainly much less than others mm -mm. so why don't they score us with that you know if human life if human life is the actual value 
to human beings, right? Not yes. economic things. It's human yeah. life that's of yes. value. Yes. Because without life, you have no economy, right? Yes. <laughs> so we have scored pretty well. So I don't know what Bloomberg is talking about. Okay. So yes. frankly, I just ignore it. Okay. Nice. Nice to <laughs> hear someone saying that frankly and brutally to them. Anyway, there is a question. Or Nikkei here. or whoever else. Oh, yes. I don't okay. understand. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nikkei, mataas tayo, di ba? Several notches, 57 notches higher tayo sa Nikkei. So how would you... I don't know. Okay. I, I mean, oh, I'll tell you something else. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. We used to be scored by the World Bank about ease of doing business. Okay. When that came out, I think 2017 or 2018, Mon oh. Lopez and I wrote the World Bank and said, Some, this is wrong. Something is wrong with your methodology. Okay. What did you say? Do you know what that? happened? You what? know what happened last September or October? Okay. It was revealed. It was revealed by an independent uh, uh, audit of World Bank that some people were manipulating the figures. What? Yes. World Bank? Yes. What are they? <laughs> Who are they? It's in, it's in the newspapers. It was all over the papers. Uh, are they Americans? Are they uh, Phil no, or officials, they officials of World Bank. So what are their motives in impugning our... I I, I don't know. No, they were not manipulating us. They were manipulating others. They wanted other countries to look better than they actually were. They wanted other countries to look worse than they what they actually were. That's why I sometimes I that's why I don't pay attention to this scoring. Okay. First of all, we are not in a horse race or we're not in a game. Okay. And it showed World Bank Mayana. Oh, yes. Yeah, you should look it up. I'll send you the articles. And I'll yeah, even yes. send you my letter to the yes, World please. Bank president. Yes, please. Because those are, I only got to know about it from you now. Yeah. So, okay. come on, guys. Let's not be obsessed with what other people think about us, okay? okay. Let us be obsessed with doing the best we can. That's be be well said. Well said. I agree with you, sir. Anyways, may I entertain another question from Warren de Guzman of ABS? Is the DOF taking steps to prepare for another possible spike in COVID-19 cases due to Omicron? Will you borrow more, or exam for example, from BSP in case Omicron forces, forces another extreme reaction such as widespread lockdown? All I will say is our finances are, flex are strong enough for us to be flexible. I don't know, as I said, I don't know what the new variants will be. I don't know how virulent they will be, how necessary it will be to, to uh, provide uh, uh, fiscal support. I, I don't know, okay? But we are ready. Okay. Um, now we are going in the last 15 minutes of our news forum. I just would like to get your takes and thoughts on... We have already mentioned about it, but but you may have other additional. Your outlook, economic outlook, financial outlook for 2022. What are the challenges and the risks ahead? Okay. I think I, I'm not a professional economist. I leave that up to uh, people like Hill Beltran, uh, Dakila, uh, <laughs> Francis Dakila, uh, you know, the real smart guys. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> I, I told you, I only, so hire, <laughs> I only hire guys smarter than me, okay? <laughs> or Kyle, you know, yeah, Kyle, Kyle, Chua, Kyle Chua, Chua, yeah. they, they, They're the ones who know how to make predictions. But I expect a strong rebound in 2022. And our estimate is that the GDP will grow between 7 and 9%. To help achieve this target and accelerate recovery, the economic development cluster has approved a 10-point agenda to shift the country from a pandemic to an endemic paradigm. In other words, let's learn how to live with this. We are never going to eliminate it. Let's live with it. The 10-point agenda, which was really prepared by Carl and his team, covers the following areas. What are we measuring? Are we measuring the right things? 
you know, the, the, the infections every day, maybe that's not anymore necessary. How, how we should measure vaccination. Uh, we should measure healthcare capacity. We should measure the economy and mobility. We should measure schooling, domestic travel, international travel, digital transformation, and the pandemic flexibility bill. And number 10, the medium-term preparation for pandemic resilience. By the way, this is not going to be our last, okay? Something yes. else will happen, okay? Uh, studies show that the COVID-19 fatality ratios fell from the current 1.7% to around 0.3% to 0.8% with full vaccination. Please get vaccinated, okay? As we continue to accelerate our vaccination drive, we should shift our focus to total severe or critical cases, the case fatality ratio and total vaccinations instead of total infections. Okay? We, don't, we shouldn't measure how many people got a cold. We should measure how many people went to the hospital. Okay? Because that is the important one. The government and private sector have shown their ability to quickly procure and administer vaccines on a wide scale basis. As of December 6, our running total for vaccine supply has already reached 149 million doses and we have successfully administered 92.8 million shots. A total of 38.7 million Filipinos are now fully vaccinated. From November 29 to December 3, the government administered 9.9 .9 million doses on the extended national vaccine days. I think we should extend this every day, okay? The numbers will improve rapidly as we continue to vaccinate about 1 million people a day. The accelerated vaccination drive will go hand in hand with the government's efforts to in strengthening the country's healthcare capacity to avert critical cases and deaths and sustain the safe opening of the economy. Even with the threat posed by new variants, we are confident that our healthcare system and vaccine stockpile will sacrifice to contain another surge in infections. We will solidify our recovery by reopening the economy to alert level one, hopefully by January 2022. At the same time, to avert long-term productivity losses and restore more employment, we will resume face-to-face -face schooling in 2022, increase public transport capacity to 100% and relax restrictions for domestic and international travel. We will not, however, simply return to business as usual. We will restore our path towards a more sustainable growth against future crises by enacting the pending economic liberalization and digital transformation bills to improve telecommunication services and attract more foreign direct investments. This may not be the last pandemic we, we will need to manage in our lifetime. Hopefully in my lifetime is the last, okay? <laughs> to ensure our resilience against future outbreaks, we propose to enact a pandemic flexibility bill. This will complement the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act. Moreover, a pandemic playbook will call all lessons we have learned over nearly two years of coping with COVID-19. The road ahead remains challenging, but we assure the Filipino people that we have all the elements in place to recover quickly and strongly from the pandemic and grow rapidly in the years to come. Sure. Uh, I'll take off from the budget 2022 uh, yeah. because uh, it's uh, an election year. So you have prepared that way ahead and uh, projected everything. Uh, will there be any uh, uh, um, major uh, adjustments in the 2022 budget? Kasi malapit na rin ma, ano yan, matapos sa Congreso. Yeah, but it's already something on, came no, up. Uh, no, it's already in... Uh, in Bicam. Bicam, yeah. Yes. Meron ba kayong pinasok lately in the Bicam? No, because no, we know no, Bicam no, is the third no. Congress. No, no, no. The alignments. The, no, the administration, mm -hmm. when it presents the budget, that yes. is the president's budget. Okay? Yes. yes. We do not fool around with it. Okay? Yes. 
That is the president's decision. Yes. That is our budget. That's yes. it. Yes. Nobody is supposed to ask for more or yes. do. You know, but or, in reality, yung realignments, that, sir. Ah, sa that's third, up to Congress. Yes. Sa third Congress, ang tawag do sa Bicam. No, no, that's uh, are you represented? Uh, you are represented also, though. There, no, 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 no. We are not only, allowed. You're it's not only, allowed. It's only the it's only the legislators. So you will be. But shocked. sometimes they ask us, and if they ask us, we give our opinion. Okay. Because you will be shocked when the final is GAA. There are many people here, Mr. President, because there are many people. My 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 favorite four-letter word. <laughs> 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 you won't mention it. Let the president mention it. That four-letter word. Anyway, sir, going back to your pandemic playbook. Yeah. So that 2022 budget has um, been incorporated in that playbook. So uh, how much of the uh, 2022 budget are dedicated to COVID-related expenses? I don't know the answer. Uh, Sorry. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I just know the, top, the big numbers. But it is sufficient and it is appropriate for the for what we expect. And sinabi mo nga, endemic shift to shifting to endemic level. Yeah, yes, yeah. And we are a disaster prone country aside from the fact na may mga yes. pandemic and endemic. Yes. Now, you also asked me what I think the, uh, the future concerns Yes, that the next that administration yeah, should uh, look from, from the finance point. Yes, I think there are four. Okay, what the first one is how to grow out of the debt that we have mm -hmm. uh, to uh, make sure that our debt gets reduced from about we will peak at about 63 64 percent of our GDP up from 39 percent. Uh, in two, uh, when in 2019, to bring it back down to around 40% of our GDP, we have to grow at something like six or six and a half percent a year. That is the main challenge of the next administration. Number two, they have to deal with inflation. Inflation is being imported, okay? There is inflation all over the world. In fact, yes. we were shocked to see that the inflation rate in Germany was 6%. That's really uh, against the religion. <laughs> so so uh, that comes from the fact that uh, fuel prices have gone up, transportation costs have gone up, logistics costs have gone up. You know, the entire, econ the entire world's economy has become very logistics dependent. And, Cost of logistics have gone up and it's driving people's prices up. Of course, there is pent up demand. On the other hand, people want to buy things, okay? Like for instance, in the US, there's a shortage of cars because there were shortage of chips to run the cars. Yes. So I'm sure there will be a surge. So how, how the next administration will deal with inflation is very crucial. The third issue, I think, and this is not so much economic, but it can spill over into the economic area, is the fact that uh, inflation, because of the uh, because of the shutdowns uh, we did as a result of COVID, uh, there has been a bigger now disparity between the haves and have-nots in the country. Our country was heading, when we came in, the poverty rate was 23.5%. Uh, By 2000, end of 2018, it was down to 16.5%. We were very successful in the first three years. But now it's gone back up, maybe up to 23%. Now, how will the next administration address that inequalities? Uh, talking about inequalities, there is also inequalities around the world, okay? So some countries will grow uh, at a higher uh, GDP rate than others. We, that might mean that we have to change our export strategies. So uh, those are issues 
uh, uh, dealing with domestic inequalities and international inequalities. Yes. And the last issue, and this is a long-term issue that the next administration has to take very seriously is climate change. Climate change is happening. Uh, it's happening in the Philippines. I am told by our experts that our seas are rising at a rate four times faster than, uh, than other countries. I am told, and I haven't checked it personally, but I will do so in the next couple of weeks, uh, that there are towns, let's say, like in uh, Masantol, uh, that are almost uh, underwater uh, 24, uh, sorry, uh, the whole year round. Uh, there Where is are, that? Where is that Masantol? Pampanga. I don't know. I was just told that. Okay. Oh. So I'm, I ask our experts to check. Baka lahar yan due to lahar. I don't know kung lahar or, or I, don't, I really don't know. So okay. those are the things we, we have to address. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, where I'm from in Davao, the weather pattern has really changed. And that the uh, productivity of, let's say, the banana industry has gone down. I don't know because of weather or because of disease. Uh, I, I don't know, but things are changing. We have uh, to address this. Uh, we have changed the uh, membership in the panel of experts of the Climate Change Commission. Okay. Rather than concentrate it on intellectuals in Manila, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we have now uh, uh, brought in a new team and that new team are experts, PhDs, uh, people with master's degrees in sciences from the provinces who live in the provinces. We have one uh, PhD in fisheries who actually lives in Bongao, Tawi Tawi. So he's one of our experts now, he's a Sama. He uh, is going to help us address the rising uh, salinity in the sea levels, because that will affect not only fisheries, but it will also affect uh, the production of carrigenin. Yeah, we're an archipelagic country. Yes, and we are also, we have also an expert, I forget his name, but uh, from uh, uh, the Mariano Marcos University in, Ilo in Batak, who is an expert in flooding. We have several experts from uh, Iloilo, on fisheries. We have experts on health. One of them is the former undersecretary of health. Uh, and, and we also have a doctor who is uh, also uh, dealing with uh, health issues brought about by climate change. Uh, we have uh, experts from uh, the Ateneo here, uh, Emma Porio. And uh, so we also, the, we also have an expert from Laguna, a lady who is uh, very, very, uh, as a PhD in, in, and we actually tomorrow, they are supposed to be discussing their uh, climate change, uh, 10 point uh, climate change program uh, on, on, uh, on Facebook tomorrow. Please join them. Yes. Uh, they're very interesting. To, yeah. They're very interesting to listen to. They are people with hands-on experience. They live among the communities that are most affected. So that is how we are trying to address this issue, not from top to the bottom, but from bottom up. Okay. Uh, Climate Change Commission is under the office of the president, isn't it? Yes, but I have been assigned as the president's representative as the chairman. Oh, I see. Now you are the one of the advocates, fellow advocates of Senator, uh, Congresswoman, Antique Congresswoman Lauren Legarda. Yes, I talk to her uh, quite frequently. Yes. And also Pia. Pia Cayetano, Senator. 
Okay, sir. Uh, we have a very well-rounded discussions this morning and conversation, intellectual and conversations down to the street level naman. <laughs> I providing the <laughs> famous you. language. Uh, sir, you. if you have any closing remarks, please take this. Uh, well, uh, just to answer your question earlier, mm. of the 5 trillion proposed budget for 2022, 396 billion is allocated to fund the government's COVID-19 pandemic response. Mm -hmm. This includes 45 billion of unprogrammed funds, which are going to be used for the purchase of booster shots okay. for everyone. Mm -hmm. So uh, the program, uh, I think, for next year will really to be is really to vaccinate uh, all uh, Filipinos uh, and also to provide booster shots uh, for everyone who has been vaccinated. So the campaign line of Senator Ping Lacson and Senate President Tito Soto to provide free boosters, free vaccination, free testing is all counted for in the 2022 budget. Only if they become they only no, no, if no, they no. become elected. It's already free now. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. It's already right. free now. I, but yes. testing, I think we uh, I think not all testing is free. Yes. However, what I would like to suggest mm. is that uh testing kits should be provided to the public so that they can self-test. Yeah, antigen, uh, na, di ba? antigen. Yeah, you know, uh, I, yeah, my team uh, and I uh, went to the, uh, went to Glasgow, terrible mm. trip. It's a lousy <laughs> place. It's cold <laughs> and miserable, but they gave us free testing kits. We oh. can test ourselves, okay? What, antigen tests? Antigen tests, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kisa. Uh, okay, and then, bababaw lang yun. Yeah, and then there's another one that is a saliva test, which is mm. available here. Mm. It's around 10 pesos per test, I think. Uh, 500 pesos per test. Here in the Philippines? In the Philippines, it's a saliva test. In fact, every time I get my hair cut, I ask my person who cuts my hair to take a saliva <laughs> test okay so gross huh no no so no, gross. You, no you speak Pero, in a, it's, a know, vial, it's a reality. you know yeah. yeah it's a reality that we have to so i also with. do it so that she knows i don't have covid okay yes yes but you, you can do it you can do yes. it yeah. since you are not some of billion sir i don't know uh my guys know where to buy it okay no, it's available. <laughs> i will really text you okay Anyway, thank, thank you, you very much, sir. If you have any closing remarks. No, that's all. That's okay. all. Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And uh, please feel free to call anytime. Okay. Thank you very much, boss. Thank you. Secretary Carlos Hanley Dominguez the third. Don't forget the third <laughs> because he's the third one. Thank you. Thank you. And see you next week.